MPs in the House of Commons there today marking that more than one million Canadians have now received dental care under the federal program. The plan is also expected to expand to more Canadians next year and features heavily into a new ad just released by the Liberals. Take a look. Pierre Poilievre has made it clear that he would make cuts to all these investments, removing health care services from millions. The ad is focused, as you saw there, on the issue of health care and comes a day after the Liberals, which have trailed the Tories by between 15 and 20 points in public opinion polling for the better part of a year, heard from their new campaign director. Mark Holland is the health minister. He joins me now to talk about all of that. Hi, Minister. Good to have you here on the show. Thanks for making the time. Thanks for having me back, Fashion. I want to start off on the ad and then ask you questions about the rollout of dental care into next year. And primarily the ad against the, you know, that we just played, the focus being on health care. In 2019... God damn. Shit. You're hard to look at. You got a big forehead. <laughs> Your party pledged in your election platform to, quote, make sure that every Canadian has access to a family doctor or primary health care team, improving the quality of care for the nearly five million Canadians who today lack access. According to the Canadian Medical Association minister today, 6.5 million Canadians lack that very access. Why are you trying to get Canadians to give you credit for a situation that has worsened under your watch? Good question. Well, first of all, we had the pandemic, uh, and that was devastating, not only to our health system, but every health system across the world. Canada had a better uh, pandemic response than just about any other in the planet with one of the lowest death rates uh, and has been the quickest, uh, one of the quickest to recover in terms of surgical wait times. That is not true. And number of surgeries performed. In fact, we have the baseline report uh, from Kaihai, which administers data that's showing um, not only that the, the, what I'm talking about surgical backlog, but that in nearly every province and territory, uh, we are now gaining doctors, gaining nurses. And that's before our bilateral plans kick in. Now, we've signed a bilateral plan with every province and every territory that's $200 billion. So that baseline is showing movement before we get there. But I, I can tell you that the only way we're really going to solve this is being upstream. 70% of chronic disease and illness is preventable. That's why things like dental care, pharmacare, school food, integrated data, and these bilateral agreements, to name just a few, are so essential. We cannot afford to not take action, not only because of the disease that will happen and the illness, but also because the cost is absolutely unbearable. We need to be upstream. We need to be investing. We certainly don't, uh, shouldn't be cutting. Do you think we're stupid? You think we're fools? Okay, but just to parse apart what you just said there, are you actually arguing to Canadians tonight that they should be happy that some baseline ha has been to return to? I cannot imagine there is a single Canadian watching the program tonight who feels like their access to health care has improved under the last number of years. And you referenced those bilateral deals. I mean, they were signed a year, well over a year ago. If they are so effective, why aren't they yet working? Good question. Well, in the first order, I, as I said, I met with my G7 counterparts. I, I don't think anybody should be happy with the health challenges coming out of the pandemic, Fashi. I, I think the fact that we had one of the best responses and that we're bouncing back faster than just about anybody else, no one should be happy with that. But I mean, as health minister, it's the heaviest thing that my heart has to go and meet people who are ill or aren't connecting to care. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? Uh, you know, what are you going to do now that we have this circumstance coming out of the pandemic? You talk about the, uh, the, the bilateral agreements. The baseline data I'm talking about captured uh, a year ago. It takes about a year to be able to see that. And anecdotally, we're in a very, very different place than we were a year ago and in improving all of the time. And that's because of our investments. And, it's, and as I said, you know, take a million people, Vashi. A million people in six months have been connected to, to oral health care. That's going to cost us about $2 billion a year. What the f*** are you talking about? In, in emergency room visits uh, for people to go in with oral health issues, now they're going to get preventative care. That's going to have a huge impact on our health system and on waiting times. We need diabetes medication, the same thing. When people don't have access to their diabetes medication, they get very, very sick. No shit. They wind up in a doctor's office. They wind up uh, clogging up emergency rooms and hospital beds when they don't need to be there. And I could go right. on and on and on. We need to be upstream. If, if you come in and the solution is to say, well, it's a tough world. Why don't we cut it and make it worse? Then the conservatives have got a plan for you. Ah, shut up. 
But what we're saying is But that's not that what I'm, but that's not what I'm pre- pre- presenting to you, Minister. With all due respect, I'm not saying this is a uh, binary choice between cutting and not. Your party put out an ad asking Canadians to give them credit for the health care system that they are enduring right now. And I put to you, I don't know any Canadian who thinks that they have a level of access to that health care system that is anywhere near satisfactory that they should in turn be giving you credit for. But what I'm saying, this is this isn't about credit. I mean, I appreciate maybe that's how you're thinking about this. It's not how I think about it. I think about it in terms of well, progress and for? solutions. And I can tell you, I can tell you that what we're doing on dental care, on pharmacare, on school food, on the bilateral agreements, on interconnected data, and I could go so much deeper on each one of those, but we have a short show. When you talk to people who are health experts, they have an enormous amount of optimism because they see that we're doing what needs to be done, not just to stabilize a health system, but completely transform it. I am absolutely hell-bent on transforming our health system. No one believes you. (laughs) To make sure we go from a system of illness and disease and waiting for people to get sick to a system of prevention and wellness. Do you know that Canada, because you you talk a lot of negative facts, Fashi, did you know that Canada has one of the longest health spans in the world? We're two years, and and what's a health span? That means years lived healthy. We're six years better than the United States, two years better than the United Kingdom, one year better than France and Italy. We have one of the best in the world. We're doing lots of good things. So you can point to one element of the, 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 the health system. What about oncology? You know, I talk, when I go walk into uh, Sick Kids uh, Hospital out in BC, and I talk to the oncologist there, when an oncologist started their career, 90% of the kids who walked in that door died. Now it's 30%. And by the way, it doesn't cost them a cent. So allowing Pierre Polyev to attack the things that are working by allowing him to cut the things that are working doesn't allow us to focus on transforming the system and making the investments we must make, Vashi, to transform this health system. Yeah, I... And certainly, I don't think me highlighting a lack of access to primary care is dismissing advances that have been made in healthcare in this country. I I ask you again, in all honesty, are there Canadians that come up to you and tell you they're satisfied with their their ability to see a family doctor? That is the promise your government made to them in 2019, that access to primary care would expand and improve under your watch. The opposite has happened. You're blaming COVID, just like immigration minister, the immigration minister blames COVID, the housing minister blames COVID. You know, I get it. COVID was a big deal. But it's being over for two, for two years, and you're, you are asking Canadians to give you credit for those improvements with this ad. No, Why else not, would you put out an you're ad? You're thinking about credit. I don't, I'm not interested in credit. No one believes you anymore. I was, look, I was head of the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Well, I've spent my for? entire life ad, advocating for the changes to our health system. I, you you're seem to be very fixated on credit. I'm not interested in credit. I'm interested in improving the system. You put out an ad and, asking and what are the Canadians solutions? to support your party yeah. because of health care. But that's asking right, for credit. But Vashi, listen to me. But Ashy, no, what it's asking for is to continue progress. What it's asking for is to say that, yes, Vashi, this was the largest uh, event in, in, since really World War II that disrupted the entire global circumstance. There isn't a health, you tell me a health system that wasn't rocked by the pandemic. And we came out faster and better than anybody. And we're one of the best, absolutely. Surgical wait times in terms of turning around the health workforce issues. So yeah, I mean, you know, I, I suppose if you if you said, well, let's pretend the pandemic never exists, that, you know, that we should be held to some kind of, like what I'm saying is I can give you a clear plan. And unfortunately this format doesn't allow us to go deep enough, but let's talk dental care. Let's talk about Dr. Redmond, who is in uh, Gander, who in just the last number of months, his team has identified three oral cancers because of the Canadian dental care plan. Those are cancers that would not have been identified if we didn't have preventative care. That's what Pierre Polyev would cut. You want to talk about diabetes? Costs this country $30 billion a year. Pierre Polyev will stop our ability to get diabetes patients medication. That's going to cost this country an untold untold billions of dollars, and it's socially unjust that somebody should go blind or should lose a limb, lose a limb because they don't have access to the medication they need. That's what's at stake. No one believes you. So you talk about credit. I'm talking about people's health. I'm talking about people's lives. I'm talking about progress in our health system. I'm talking about making sure that we build on one of the best health systems in the world. And I'm here to fight for it, Vashi. And so, you know, you're talking about credit. I'm talking about fighting for what I care about. 
I mean, right, a, so why a, would we allow Pierre Paul to come out? Right? Why would we? Yeah, but an ad put out by a political party is is hoping to advance the cause of that political party among Canadians. It is you are hoping by putting that ad out yeah. that Canadians will respond to it and say, you know, we want you to yeah. stay on this track. We are giving you credit for where we are right now. And I'm putting to you that despite all the stuff that you just laid out, which I agree, look, there is expanded access for people with diabetes and under dental care. I would not take away from that. There are still major, major issues in this health care system that you have presided over. But, but, but I mean, you make a fundamental mistake with all due respect, Fashi. I joined the Liberal Party when I was 12 years old. I started fighting, investing my life and people looked at me weird. I My mom gave me a pack lunch and I went to volunteer in a campaign office. And like so many people in politics, I went in because I believe in this country and I believe in trying to make it better. I, look, there's many things that I or anybody in politics could do. The reason I'm not on Halloween tonight with my family being there for a, a, my family that I love is so that I can fight for the kind of future I believe that they should have, the kind of country that we should have, one where we get to live free of disease and illness, where we attack illness before it happens when we're investing upstream. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm in it. You want to call it credit? Like, I'm going to be forgotten, Vashi. Like, you know. Oh, shut up. Five years now, I lost. I know this. Like, the, once the, the title's gone, I'm forgotten. Like, no one's going to remember me. But what, what I'm going to know in the depths of my heart, in the moments that I had, is did I deliver for Canadians? Did I get it done? Did I improve care? And, and I think care? it's fair did for I somebody to ask forward? you about the I'm areas that you do. haven't delivered on. Yeah, and I'm not taking away totally, from your motivation. Totally I would never ascribe motivation, yeah. but I think it is fair to get to ask the person who's in charge of the of the healthcare system across this country about the areas in which it is lacking. That's all I'm trying to do. And in that vein, yeah, yeah. I do and want I'm to ask you about dental care before I let you go, because I, I want to ask about access. Because you did, you did, and we played the clips earlier. Talk about how there are, uh, you know, a million people who have now accessed that system, and next year there are going to be. Uh, uh, millions more who will essentially be eligible. I listened to your press conference today and there were a couple questions about how soon that will happen because the minister, uh, Minister Beach, had at one point last June said that in January, the rest of those Canadians would be eligible to apply. You seem to not be willing to commit to that January date. How soon in 2025 might those millions of Canadians be able to apply for this access? Well, one of the reasons we've got this last six months so right with so few problems, and we have 89% of oral health providers now participating, a million Canadians getting care, is because we were methodical and we make sure we got each step right. The next step starts tomorrow, it's a big one. We're expanding care to the more complicated cases. We call this pre-authorization, predetermination. So these are really complex cases that really need additional care. That starts tomorrow. We also do paper claims tomorrow, which allows us to go from 89% I really believe to 100%. I think we can get there. I'm working every day to get us there. But as health minister, I want to make sure we're hitting all of our marks correctly. And I'd be happy, Vashi, to come back in a few weeks after I get a look at that uh, information on how that program is working before I give you, a, you know, kind of a clearer timeline on exactly when we're going to do it. What I can say is that it's going to be as soon as possible. Once I feel that those pieces are, are in place and that we've got, you know, things like re-enrollment and uh, this, these pieces around pre-authorization, predetermination uh, and paper claims working right and really firing on all cylinders and really delivering care for people, then I want to, as soon as possible, make sure that we expand those cohorts to everybody. But it has to be iterative and we have to be very careful because if we get it wrong, then we're going to right. invite, uh, you know, what Polyev wants to do, which is to toss the whole thing in a garbage can. And you're going to have seniors who can't dent get dentures and people who can't get preventative care. Is your sense, just very quickly, I have 30 seconds, is your sense that that will all be able to happen in 2025? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, uh, okay. and as quickly as possible in 25. Okay. I'm going to leave it on that note. Minister, I appreciate it as always. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Fashion. Appreciate it.